Out in the night sky, many wondrous things hover in the firmament above us. Those closest to our humble world are easier to understand, but they are by no means the limit of our knowledge. For beyond the moon's burning soul and even the furthest of the planets, there can be found countless stars stretching out into the infinite cosmos. While the vast majority of these blazing lights fall beneath the threshold of importance, there are several that form patterns and pictures which have acquired critical importance within the cultures of the world due to their significance at unveiling the future. For if the past had been so heavily shaped by beings from these very same stars, then surely the events to come will be guided by them as well. Such is the law of the cosmos, the blue wind of Azir that is drawn to the upper atmosphere, making this belief into reality. But just what are these constellations that revolve in the night sky throughout the year? What impact do they have on those below? What knowledge do they grant for those skilled enough to read them? Starting at the beginning of the year, which begins at midwinter, we shall explore the 20 star signs and their meaning. Before we can do so, a very brief explanation of the Empire's calendar is required to properly understand the times in which each constellation is ascendant. In a later video, we shall dive much deeper into the topic, but for now just know that the 400 day year is broken down into 12 months, with 6 additional intercalary days that make the turning of the 4 seasons and the 2 most magically significant days of the year. The 12 months are as follows, starting from Hexenstag or New Year's Day. The order is Nachhexen, Jarðrung, Flugzeit, Sigmarzeit, Sommerzeit, Vorgheim, Nachgeheim, Ernstzeit, Brautzeit, Klodzeit, Ulrichzeit, and Vorhexen. I apologize for the pronunciations, let's move on. Each of these months contains 33 days, with the exception of Nachthexen and Nachtgeheim, which only contain 32. As I said earlier, I will do a significant examination of the calendar, weeks, holidays, etc. in a later video coming soon. Now that we have that established, let us begin with the first full constellation that starts after midwinter. For each star sign, I shall cover their name, their classical name, when they are ascendant, associated gods or gods, appearance, calendar dates for determining those born under the influence of the sign, and what said influence is. The first star sign is Wymond the Anchorite, the sign of enduring. Known in classical as Wymanos, this constellation becomes ascendant during midwinter. It is associated with Manan, the god of storms and the sea. It has the appearance of a stern face. When Wyman the Anchorite appears, it signals a time to be extra cautious and wary. The dates to determine those born under Wyman the Anchorite are the 12th of Vorhexen to the 27th of Vorhexen. People born under the light of Wyman the Anchorite are known for being tolerant, patient, and methodical. They prefer to scrutinize every detail of a situation before deciding how to proceed. Their slowness to pass judgment and tolerance of the foibles of others makes them kind, loyal friends, sometimes to a fault. A rare few are overly cautious, to the point that they can become paralyzed with indecision. Often, they forgive others the unforgivable to their detriment. But when they decide that a person is no longer worthy of their grace, they are harsh, implacable foes. 
The second star sign is the Big Cross, the sign of clarity. Known in classical as Azurios, this constellation becomes ascendant during midwinter. It is associated with Ulrich, the god of winter, wolves, and battle. It has the appearance of an X. The Big Cross heralds a time of clear thinking, of secrets revealed, and good decisions. The light of this constellation reveals hidden opportunities and useful avenues that can solve problems with ease. The dates to determine those born under the Big Cross are the 28th of Borhexen to the 8th of Nachhexen. They are said to be lucid, sane, and rational. There is no uncertainty in the hearts of those born under the Big Cross. They are grounded in the here and now with clear minds. The path they must take through the world seems obvious to them, and they make sensible choices to keep on it. But this rationality can lead to a predictable passivity and detachment from the world around them. If their path is already made, why deviate from it? It is vital that they find something to fight for, rather than simply allowing the tides of fate to sweep them away. The third star sign is the Limnir's Line, the sign of precision. Known in classical as Veros, this constellation becomes ascendant during late winter, early spring. It is associated with Valak, the god of smithing and shipbuilding in Nordland. It has the appearance of an archer with a drawn bow. When the Limnir's line is full in the sky, it is a boon to craftsmen and artists throughout the old world. It is a symbol of inspiration, bringing out the best talents in those who make their living producing goods. The Limnir's line also symbolizes excellence in swordplay and archery, though such associations are minor. The dates to determine those born under the Limner's line are the 9th of Nakhexen to the 28th of Nakhexen. They are said to be accurate, exact, and precise. Natives of the Limner's line were born to be poets, painters, sculptors, artists of all kinds. They create beauty wherever they go, and even those who by circumstance do not find themselves in an artistic field still find a way to make their life's work into a kind of art. If they are doctors, they are surgeons. If they are soldiers, they become master tacticians. People born under the Limner's line must take care not to become too critical of themselves or their work. The fourth star sign is Nuthus the Ox, the sign of dutiful service. Known in classical as Nuthlos, this constellation becomes ascendant during early spring. It is associated with Gulvar, the god of bulls in Osland. It has the appearance of an ox. When the ox appears in the sky, it heralds a time of peace and calm, of stability and business as usual. The dates to determine those born under Nuthus the Ox are the 29th of Nakhexen to the 16th of Yardrung. They are said to be loyal, constant, and stubborn. Those born under the sign of the Ox are devoted allies and fast friends. When they pledge themselves to a person, an ideal, or a cause, they cannot be moved. If they make a promise, they honor it. If they owe someone a debt, they find a way to pay it, no matter the cost to themselves. Their honesty is just as often naivete, and they must be on guard lest others take advantage. In addition, they pledge themselves to the wrong causes and losing sides, just as often as they find themselves on the side of righteousness. The fifth star sign is Dragomas the Drake, the sign of courage. Known in classical as Draconos, this constellation becomes ascendant during spring. It is associated with Cain, 
the bloody-handed god of murder. It has the appearance of a rearing dragon. When this constellation flies through the night sky, it warns old worlders of conflict and strife, but it also invokes courage in the face of destruction. When visible, towns double their perimeter patrols and recruit new members for the militia. The dates to determine those born under Dragomas the Drake are the 17th of Yardrung to the 7th of Flugsite. Those born under Dragomas are said to be courageous, strong, and doomed. They may be physically powerful and have unwavering morals. Bold and assertive people born under Dragomas the Drake are instinctive leaders. They project confidence and assurance into the world, and people simply want to follow them. This charisma, however, can quickly cross the line into an inflexible arrogance, and what begins with gentle leadership and guidance may end in tyranny. Being a leader comes with responsibility to one's followers, and those born under the drake are wise to remember this. The sixth star is the gloaming, the sign of illusion and mystery. Known in classical as Tartots, this constellation becomes ascendant during spring. It is associated with Mor, the god of death and dreams. It has the appearance of a collection of red and blue stars that appear only briefly at twilight. When the gloaming appears, it is a signal of hidden things, of secrets and false images. When it appears, clarity dims and secret plots are often afoot. The dates to determine those born under the gloaming are the 8th of Flugsite to the 31st of Flugsite. People born under the gloaming are known for being mysterious, doubting, and skeptical. This skepticism can morph into paranoia and unreasonable suspicion of anything they cannot see or touch, including magic, astrology, and even just distant lands. The metaphysical, the theoretical, none of it is trustworthy. Only the hard, physical reality of the world is reliable to them. At their best, natives of the gloaming are brilliant investigators and scholars. They are often inclined toward sorcery, despite their distrust of the mystical. The seventh star sign is Grugni's Baldric, the sign of martial pursuits. Known in classical as Gillian, this constellation becomes ascendant during late spring, early summer. It is associated with Grugni, the god of smiths in Stirland, and an ancestor god of the dwarfs. It has the appearance of a dwarf with a baldric. It signifies excellence at arms and skill in battle. As such, many lords start their summer campaigns with a great feast beneath this constellation. The dates to determine those born under Grugni's baldric are the 32nd of Flugsite to the 22nd of Sigmarsite. Grugni's baldric is sacred to soldiers and dwarfs, and as such, those born under its light are honorable, disciplined, and naturally disposed to the soldiering life. Even those who are not soldiers tend to approach their personal lives with a martial rigor. They fanatically hone their skills and live rigid lifestyles to toughen themselves. It is difficult for people born under the Baldric to relax and enjoy the finer things in life. People born under the more tranquil signs may find them single-minded and humorless. The eighth star sign is Mamet the Wise, the sign of wisdom. Known in classical as Mamias, this constellation becomes ascendant during early summer. It is associated with Varina, the goddess of learning and justice. It has the appearance of an owl. Mamet the Wise underscores a time for introspection, 
philosophy and questioning. The dates to determine those born under Mammoth the Wise are the 23rd of Sigmarzite to the 11th of Summerzite. They are known for being educated, wise, and fair. To the person born under Mammoth the Wise, everything is an opportunity for learning. This introspective bent makes them clever, fair, and kind, but it can lead them to view the misfortunes of others as simply another subject for study. This allows them to act with detachment when they must, but taken too far, their detachment can become indifference and cruelty. The ninth star sign is Mummet the Fool, the sign of the indistinct. Known in classical as the Fool, this constellation becomes ascendant during summer. It is associated with Ranald, the god of trickery. It has the appearance of a smiling face. It is the symbol of common sense and intuition, but also improbable luck. The dates to determine those born under Mummet the Fool are the 12th of Summerzeit to the 29th of Summerzeit. Mummet the Fool smiles down at the world from the night sky and heralds a time of new beginnings, new quests, and travel. People born under Mummet the Fool are sensible, intuitive, and above all, improbably lucky. Things simply work out for them, or seem to. As such, they are known to struggle with impulsivity and wanderlust, a desire to leave it all behind and avoid responsibility for as long as they can. The tenth star sign is the two bullocks, the sign of fertility and craftsmanship. Known in classical as Hashor, this constellation becomes ascendant during midsummer. It is associated with Ahalt, goddess of hunting, fertility, and sacrifice in Wizenland. It has the appearance of two oxen. There seems to be a great boom in production of just about everything in the empire when this constellation is full. Crops tend to grow plentiful and livestock is fertile. Artisans produce large quantities of goods and many children are conceived. The dates to determine those born under the two bullocks are the 30th of Summerzeit to the 13th of Vorkheim. They are known for being fertile and skilled. People born under the two bullocks are innovators. They are diligent, creative, and can create nearly anything they put their minds to. Fortunately for the world, what they want most is to help others whether that means making improvements to a printing press or designing a better plow for their family's fields. Unfortunately, the projects they throw themselves into can be fanciful and impractical, and malefactors might bend their idealism to dangerous or unrighteous causes. The eleventh star sign is the Dancer, the sign of love and attraction. Known in classical as Adamnos, this constellation becomes ascendant during late summer. It is associated with Milavog, the god of dancing in Wizenland. It has the appearance of a whirling dancer. Many a legend's great lover has had his passion attributed to being born under this sign, including Kasanava of Prague, Romeo of Talea, and even Don Juan Juan Ran of Estalia. The dates to determine those born under the dancer are the 14th of Vorkheim to the 2nd of Nakgeheim. They are known for being amorous, desirable, and scornful. The dancer is the sign of passion and of obsession. What those born under the sign choose to pursue they chase with a single-minded devotion. Whether their focus is a lover or a mystery to solve, the world falls away in the face of their determination. When they are scorned, they take it poorly. 
and may react violently. The twelfth star sign is the drummer, the sign of excess and hedonism. Known in classical as Lupios, this constellation becomes ascendant during late summer and early autumn. It is associated with Lupos, the god of predators in Hawkland. It has the appearance of a drum. The sign of the drummer is viewed differently throughout the empire. Some see it as a celebration, whilst others believe it to be a sign of the steady decline of man towards chaos. The dates to determine those born under the drummer are the 3rd of Nachgeheim to the 24th of Nachgeheim. They are known for being excessive, hedonistic, and celebratory. A person born under the drummer is distinguishable by their expansive, generous spirit. They do nothing in moderation, and when they give, they give everything. A drummer never fails to give alms to the poor or take care of ailing family members. They also never turn down an invitation to a tavern or a pastry. They are a joy to be around, but this joy can swiftly turn to ruinous excess and hedonism if left unchecked. The thirteenth sign is the piper, the sign of the trickster. Known in classical as Sangist, this constellation becomes ascendant during autumn. It is associated with Ronald, the god of tricksters, and Katya, the goddess of disarming beauty in Reichland. It has the appearance of a capering piper. The sign of the piper has always been regarded with some suspicion. Astrologers believe great leaders are born under this sign, but also great traitors as well. Some even believe they are one and the same. The dates to determine those born under the piper are the 25th of Nachgeheim to the 16th of Ernstzeit. The best diplomats are born under the piper's rules, and so are the best thieves. They are cunning, slick, and even very tactful when they need to be. In a negotiation, there is none better to have one's back. However, they do not hesitate to play both sides to their advantage, or take advantage of allies if they think they'll come out the better for it. Theologians disagree as to the correct deity to associate with the piper. In Marienburg, it is considered a particularly fortuitous sign, and some families attempt to conceive nine months before it rises ascendant. The fourteenth star sign is Vobus the Faint, the sign of darkness and uncertainty. Known in classical as Vobus, this constellation becomes ascendant during autumn. It is associated with Renald, the god of tricksters. It has no appearance, as it is simply a void in the night sky. When Vobist is high, the witch hunters are on the prowl. Mental illnesses, often mistaken for witchery, are at a peak during this time. It has a similar effect to when Morselib waxes full. The dates to determine those born under Vobis the Faint are the 17th of Ernstzeit to the 6th of Brauzeit, a void of stars, an empty spot in the heavens. Someone born under Vobis the Faint seems erratic and uncertain at times. After all, they were born under pure darkness. They are known for being ambiguous, erratic, and uncertain. They can be overcautious at times, but they can also be bold and courageous when others least expect it, leaping into the fray before even their bravest of friends. What seems to be a fundamental uncertainty is also a keen sense of which battles to fight and how. For Morselib, the Chaos Moon, to rise full while Vobis the Faint is ascendant is considered a particularly bad omen. 
The 15th star sign is the Broken Cart, the sign of pride. Known in classical as Kadernos, this constellation becomes ascendant during autumn. It is associated with Nurgle, the chaos god of despair and plagues. It has the appearance of a cart with a broken wheel. The star sign attributed to the refined minority. The broken cart symbolizes the pride and arrogance so disdained in the noble class. The dates to determine those born under the broken cart are the 7th of Brauzeit to the 27th of Brauzeit. They are known for being arrogant and conceited. At times, people born under the broken cart can be prideful and overconcerned with appearances. They might spend their last coin in pursuit of the finer things in life, or dash themselves on the rocks looking for the approval of their betters. When this tendency is curbed, when they come to peace with the fundamental insecurities that cause them to spend their lives searching for things to fulfill them, their pride becomes confidence, and their conceit mellows into likability. The broken cart's association with Nurgle, however, is rarely acknowledged, as worship of any ruinous power is grounds for a short trip to a tall pyre in most parts of the world. All will know that there is something dark and primal about the sign, however, and its associations with disease are common across many different cultures. Most folk know that the father of plagues is a force in the world, and when disease scours the land, the desperate often recall old tales and forbidden rites and make offerings just the same. The 16th star sign is the greased goat, the sign of denied passions. Known in classical as Talios, this constellation becomes ascendant during late autumn. It is associated with Tal, god of wild places and animals. It has the appearance of a goat. The greased goat signifies a time of failure. Many astrologers view it as a dangerous period when an incursion could lead to slaughter, as the people are apathetic and slow to react to any threats during this time. The dates to determine those born under the greased goat are the 28th of Brauzeit to the 17th of Cloudzeit. They are known for being detached and insipid. A person born under the greased goat refuses to let anyone get too near. They can seem aloof and apathetic, but this is an attempt to make sure they are not hurt by the disappointments that are assuredly coming their way. When they are knocked down, they wallow in their pain. On the rare occasions they allow themselves to feel joy, their joy is infectious. Children born under the grease goat who have an aptitude for magic often find themselves drawn towards the amber wind of Gur. Those born under the grease goat would be wise to remember that the world is not there to victimize them. Everyone has a run of bad luck sometimes, but it does not define them. The 17th star sign is Raya's Cauldron, the sign of mercy, death, and creation. Known in classical as the Rionius, this constellation becomes ascendant during early winter. It is associated with Raya, goddess of fertility and summer. It has the appearance of a cauldron. A highly revered star sign, Raya's cauldron is associated with all aspects of nature by astrologers. The dates to determine those born under Raya's cauldron are the 18th of Cloudzeit to the 33rd of Cloudzeit. They are known for being righteous, fearless, and merciful. Raya's cauldron is particularly revered by astromancers, wizards of the jade and amethyst orders, and astrologers alike. 
It is associated with the budding of new things in nature, and also their inevitable death. People born under its light are known to be righteous in their ideals and merciful towards the innocent. No matter what their station in life, they are relentless in their pursuit of justice and vehemently take steps to cleanse the world of mutants wherever possible. This relentlessness, however, if unchecked, can make them careless and even callous towards the lives and well-being of others. The 18th star sign is Cacofex the Cockerel, the sign of money and merchants. Known in classical as Kakaros, this constellation becomes ascendant during winter. It is associated with Kakarol, the god of horses in Osland. It has the appearance of two coins. When Kakalfex the Cockerel is high in the sky, merchants and bankers rub their hands together greedily. This time usually brings about a surge in consumerism. People buy and trade with less haggling. The dates to determine those born under Kakalfex the Cockerel are the 1st of Ulrichzeit to the 16th of Ulrichzeit. They are known for being frugal, greedy, and money-grubbing. Those born under Kakalfex the Cockerel have lofty goals and their eyes towards the future. You'll rarely find a spendthrift Cockerel. They go about achieving their goals in the most direct way possible. And that means acquisition of connections, favors, property, skill, and most of all, money. Tons of money. As they rise, they take care of those who took care of them. Many established and aspiring political figures in the old world were born under the sign of the cockerel, or at least claim they were. Other signs may find the cockerel greedy or ruthless, but they know their truth. In this world, success isn't earned by the most meritorious. It is bought with money or with blood. The 19th star sign is the bone saw, the sign of skill and learning. Known in classical as Alioi, this constellation becomes ascendant during winter. It is associated with Shalya, the goddess of healing and mercy. It has the appearance of a knife. The bone saw is revered by astrologers and scholars alike as a symbol of the knowledge man has gained over the centuries. The dates to determine those born under the bone saw are the 17th of Ulrichzeit to the 31st of Ulrichzeit. They are known for being curious, philosophical, and skilled. The bone saw is the sign of the philosopher. Above all else, they crave knowledge. They live to explore and experiment. Unlike other inquisitive signs, however, they do not want to hoard what they know for its own sake, and they do not withdraw into themselves. One born under the bone saw wants to disseminate what they know as widely as possible. This can, however, make them seem like overbearing know-it-alls rather than passionate scholars of the world. The 20th and final star sign is the Witchling Star, the sign of magic. Known in classical as Solkios, this constellation becomes ascendant during winter. It is associated with Sol, the god of the sun. It has the appearance of a single bright star. It appears mostly when the green moon Morselib is full. In some parts of the empire, children born under this sign are often hunted and killed by rabid villagers out of fear. The dates to determine those born under the Witchling Star are the 32nd of Ulrichzeit to the 11th of Vorhexen. They are known for having courage, magical talent, and being strong-willed. 
magical and mysterious, the Witchling Star is considered an ominous sign by most astrologers. Those under its rule have great courage. They possess a sort of mercuriality that stops just short of dishonesty or inconstancy, but which occasionally causes problems for those around them. Whatever scrapes they get themselves into, they can generally get out of. Their charm can seem nearly mystical at times, almost as though they were blessed by the winds of magic themselves. That concludes the 20 acknowledged constellations, at least for those who dwell within the Empire. As one might imagine, the other cultures of the world often know these star signs by other names, or even observe star signs not seen by those under Sigmar's sky. For instance, a known constellation not covered on this list is the Bear, which is carefully tracked by the hardy people of Kislev, for obvious reasons. Only the Lizardmen, the High Elves, and the Astromancers of Grand Cathay likely pay attention to the entirety of the heavens through their impressive sorceries and powerful artifacts created in ages long past. Unfortunately, we don't have much information at this time about their observations. Before I go, I do want to grant you all a small but hopefully fun little gift in the form of a star chart to determine what star sign you would have been born under if we translated the Warhammer fantasy calendar onto our own. This image on screen should serve as a guide, and I'll put the file on my Patreon as well for those who want to download it for whatever reason. Be sure to let me know down in the comments section about which star sign you would fall under. How well does it fit in your opinion? Speaking of Patreon, I do want to take a moment to thank all of the wonderful folks over there for helping support the channel, and in particular would like to call out Scion of the Emperor, Eric, Eckhart here Thalion, Hawk Oddly, Hologam, Mr. Vorn, and Squats for their generous support. Regardless of the amount, every bit on Patreon really does help more than I can express. Thank you. With the stars and the solar system now behind us, be sure to return in the near future as we turn our attention to the moons, Manslib and Morslib. Till next time, thank you for watching and take care.